Welcome back to Code Station 33. Today we are going to look at a whole bunch of libraries you could use in order to create your own project. Specifically, uh, creating your own project using some kind of sensor or some other kind of uh, object like a servo or a motor. Fortunately, we do not have to reinvent the wheel. We have been looking at this idea of libraries in the last module, and we have learned that you can use module libraries that are built in in order to control a whole bunch of things and use this idea of black box abstraction so we don't need to necessarily have the computer um, or the, the Arduino and write every bit of code for it ourselves. There's a lot that we can use that is already done for us. And you know enough now that you could dive in and start using some of these libraries to create some really, really cool and fun projects on your own uh, without having to do much more learning than you already have. So let's dive in and take a look at some of these libraries. So if you go to arduino.cc um, and look up the libraries, you can see, and I linked this for you, you can see that there are a whole bunch of libraries that you have access to. Uh, there are 978 communication libraries. There are 250 data processing libraries, 134 data storage libraries. 782 different devices you can control, 399 displays, other sensors, signal input and output, timing, and then some stuff that's just, they didn't even know how to categorize. Uh, some of the built-in libraries that are stored on your Arduino automatically that you don't have to add um, with, uh, without you know, doing anything too, too much extra is the EEPROM, like we talked about, Ethernet, connecting up the Arduino to the internet. Uh, something called Firmata, which is for communicating with a uh, computer using the, stereo, the standard serial protocol. That means having your Arduino talk to another computer. The GSM for connecting uh, what's called a GSM shield. Liquid Crystal, that's for a liquid crystal display, which we'll be looking at. Reading and writing to SD cards, servo motors, SPI, which is talking to other serial peripheral interfaces, those other devices that are a little bit more complex. Software serial communication on any of the digital pins. Uh, a stepper for controlling stepper motors. Uh, that's great for making things like um, 3D printers and laser cutters. We use stepper motors all the time for things like that. Uh, drawing text images and shapes with the Arduino TFT screen a Wi-Fi um, component that we can add onto it, and then something called two-wire interface, which leaves us, uh, gives us the ability to send and receive data over a whole network of different devices and sensors. Uh, there are a couple other libraries that are included, and you can go through that some of them are specific to um, particular versions of the Arduino. And you can kind of go through and see what, you know, take a look at all of those different ones. Uh, remember, we're working on the, on the Arduino Uno, so most of these will be available. But you can even see something, there's something called an Arduino robot, which gives you all the functionality that you would need to build a robot, which is really kind of awesome. So another place that we can find some um, libraries is inside of Tinkercad. So I'm going to go into Tinkercad again. And I'm going to go in and create a circuit. And if I look at this drop down over here, there are pre-made starters for Arduino. Now, some of them, you know, are kind of silly for us because we've, we've already done a lot of these, like 
turning an LED on and off and um, getting a button to work, uh, fading, this is mostly LED stuff, debounce, we've talked about this, this is that idea of making sure the, the button doesn't get um, a uh, extra piece of data, analog input we've done, serial read, we've done all these things. Here's the first of them when we haven't done. This is a servo, so let's open this up. And you can see when you open up the project, it gives you the actual design, which in this case is a little motor, servo motor. And a servo motor is used to control things like arms on a robot or um, switches, doors, gates, whatever you want to control to open and close. Let me get my zoom screen here. There we go, hang on. Sometimes the zooming in and out gets me lost. There we go. Much better. So now when I start this, I can see that my little servo is just turning around and then back and forth pretty easily. We can see this is just a power and a ground and one pin in order to run it. So we could actually run mul multiple servos here. They wrote the code here in the scratch blocks rather than the scratch text. So it's fine, you can look at it as the blocks. Uh, there are some comments in here for us to see how things go. I'm gonna switch it to the text just because that's what we've been using. And we can see that we have included the servo library. And we set up what's called a servo object. And we're gonna call it servo nine because it's on pin number nine. We have to send some information that it's attached to pin nine. These numbers have to do uh, with how the servo is designed, um, the 500 and the 2500. You could look up servo.h in the Arduino library and find out more about it. So if we click on device control and then click on servo, we can see all of the information about this library. And we can see here is the actual library code itself, if you really wanted to go ahead and look at it, along with other examples. So we can see you know, how to make this servo work. This one's working with a potentiometer, so that could be kind of cool. And if we look up the Arduino Uno, it'll give us, you know, where we can buy our Arduino. I don't think I want to do that. It just tells us the compatibilities, tells us the usage, tells us that servo motor has three powers and it is typically red for the power, yellow for the signal, and here are the methods. Attach, write, write microseconds, read, attached, detached. So for example, if we look at the write method, we can see that we can write a particular angle that tells us what angle that the server will turn to between zero and 180 degrees. If we look at attach, this tells us that the attach does the pin and then the min and the max. Min would be the pulse width in microseconds that corresponds to the minimum, which is zero degree angle on the servo. Default is 544. The max is the pulse width in microseconds that corresponds to the maximum, 180 degrees. So that 544 and 2500 that we saw in our code has to do with our specific device, 500 and 2500. That tells us where zero and 180 degrees is on our servo. So we might have to do some messing with the numbers uh, as we get our servo to make sure it's working as we expected. 
Then we have a nice little loop here that is just going to make the servo go between 0 and 180 degrees, one degree at a time. Wait 15 seconds and then go the other direction, counting from 180 down to 0. That's all it's doing. So if you think about this, you could set your servo to any number of angles or degrees and get it to do things like open doors and open gates, or maybe it's part of a robot and it is controlling a robot arm and you have multiple servos that you're controlling. So the servo is just one example. So let's take a look at some of the other built-in Tinkercad projects that we have that we can take a look at. I'm going to go back to here. Create a new circuit. And look at our built-in Arduino. So we have our tone. We looked at that before, but this one has uh, multiple tones. So we want to do more with tones, we could. This is an ultra range finder, ultrasonic range finder. And this is great because it allows the Arduino to tell when something is close to it. So when we run this code, it kind of fakes it, right? You see this? It's putting out this fake data for us so we can kind of see when something is near it. So when I click it, it tells me, you know, it's, it's pretending that something's there. If you were actually to connect this to a real range finder, we would see that it gets data. And in this case, it's going to print how far away in inches uh, something is to that range finder. How might you use that? Well, we use it in physics class when we want to um, keep track of um, a ball bouncing. You may have used that in your physics class when you want to see how long it takes for that ball to bounce and lose its energy. Uh, you might use it in a robot if you wanted to uh, see if the robot is close to a wall and maybe the robot needs to turn. So range finders become real uh, important things. Think of it as like sonar for your Arduino device. So let's go ahead and look at another one. Stop the simulation. Open this back up and look at some of the other things we do. NeoPixel. There we go. Delete this one. There we go. This is basically an LED string. And you can see that we only have three wires connected to it. This could be a whole lot of fun to play with if you ever worked with LEDs. If we start a simulation, and you can see that this is turning the LEDs different colors. So this would be great if you had an LED string that maybe you bought on the internet and you wanted to control it with your Arduino. You could, and this would allow you to change that to a whole bunch of different colors. And you can see how they're changing individually. This is a very special um, LED. It's called a uh, NeoPixel string. It's not just every LED set up to work together. Each one can work independently, which is really kind of awesome. And you can see we don't have to do a lot. We're just including the library from uh, Adafruit called NeoPixel. And we are defining the pin and the number of lights that we have. And then all we're doing is a for loop from zero to the number of lights and setting the pixel color. Pretty straightforward. Now they do it in red, green, blue. We've looked at that before, where we set the color based upon red, green, blue, and then we show the pixels, and then we wait. This one down here, set color, does a random one between zero and 255, which gives us a possible 16 million different colors. So that can be a whole lot of fun to play with. Uh, something that you definitely could add to your room to make your room look cooler. Awesome little project there. Let me delete that one. Delete these guys. And let's see what else we're going to look for. The LCD screen.
definitely a lot more complicated to build with, but it gives you the ability to really get displays onto your screen and really see what's going on with your Arduino. So combining this with other sensors and having it maybe uh, do a temperature sensor and see what the current temperature is, or maybe even that range finder that says, you know, how far it is away from a particular object. And I'll leave that for you to take a look at. So those are the ones, those are the projects that are built into uh, Tinkercad that we could use. Uh, you can go ahead and again look at these libraries and find any one of these libraries that you might want to play with. Not all of the sensors are included in Tinkercad, but we do have a lot of the sensors included. If we go and look at everything, all components, we can see that there's different sensors that are included. Uh, ambient light sensors, a PIR sensor, um, two different ultrasound and distance sensors, a tilt sensor that's kind of like determine whether or not something is left or right um, tilted, a keypad, dip switches, uh, different kinds of LEDs, NeoPixels, NeoPixel numbers, motors, servos, micro servos, a hobby gear motor, we talked about the IR remote, a seven segment display. So those are all the different kinds of things that are built into our Arduino. So explore with these, see what kind of project you might like to build and build something to share. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun doing that. That's all I have for you. I will see you coding soon.